Here's what you're missing over at patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. From the Gettysburg Museum of History Studios, you're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this episode of Addressing Gettysburg. And today we are talking about Yellow Hill. Ooh, sounds almost like a horror movie, but it's not. It's a pretty little area of Pennsylvania. Uh, in Manalan Township, and uh, with us to talk about it today is someone who you will hear on an episode of That's What She Said with Veronica and Bethany, uh, but you're hearing her first here on Addressing Gettysburg's regular show, Deb McCausland. Hello, Deb. Hello. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Uh, is that your car alarm going off in the background? Oh, thanks. So. Okay, good. Uh, so, of course, everybody knows we're recording in a parking lot, and they're used to sounds of cars and buses and all those other things. So, it's not going to get in our way. Um, all right. So, Yellow Hill. I'm I'm going to guess that most in the audience have not heard of Yellow Hill because okay. there was no fighting there that I'm aware of during the battle. Right? No little skirmish or anything mm, like that? No, no skirmish. Right. The Confederates were definitely confiscating horses and um, supplies of food from the families in the area. Okay. For sure. And now, I'd heard that some free African Americans of Gettysburg fled to go to Yellow Hill during the battle. And right. And again, there were Confederates in that area confiscating horses. So that's the thing. So Yellow Hill is a, would it be uh um, is it a, what we call like a, a settlement of freed blacks? Yes. Is that how it started? Yes. Yes. Uh, originally it was called Pine Hill. Right. What, it, what, why did the, why the change? Um, the song, the yellow rose of Texas is about a brown skinned woman. Okay. And this, here's a slave ad that I'm reading from, uh, Gettysburg newspaper in 1817. And it says, a $100 reward for ran away from the subscriber in Georgetown, a Negro man named Jack or John. This man eloped the 29th of June, supposed to, uh, by some means, secure a pass. John is of a rather dark yellow complexion, or nearly black. So, so mulatto this is people were sometimes called yellow or high yellow. High yellow, so right. This, um, it kind of... I found this. My dad lived on Yellow Hill, so I heard about oh. Yellow Hill my whole life. Okay. My grandfather had a fruit farm on Yellow Hill. Oh. I picked fruit on Yellow Hill. So you have a personal connection oh, to Yellow Hill. Big time. And now, is it still a predominantly black community there? No. They've no. all pretty much all gone away. So it was like a refuge, maybe, for them? A, a safe place? For the, uh, initially? That's how I can best, I think, describe it for your listeners. Um, I was attending a lecture by Dr. Gladfelder, and he was showing us and talking about the 1860 uh, census information and about how Adams Countyans voted. But what I saw on his handouts were um, a large black population outside of Gettysburg. Of course, in the borough of Gettysburg and Cumberland Township that surrounds it, there were a, a good amount of free African Americans. And then I saw Butler and Manalan Township, those numbers combined to like 80 or 90 people. And I'm like, well, who were these people? Mm -hmm. So I worked in Harrisburg. I went to the microfilm of the state library at my lunch hour and I'd throw that microfilm on. This is before things were digitalized. I'd go to Butler and Manalan Township looking in the column for race to see a B for black or an M for mulatto. So I started to document who these people of color were that lived in these two townships. And I documented that in the book that I published. I self-published this. So um, it started even in before the 1700s, I think, um, before the 1800s. 1790, we see some free Negroes being counted on the census. And this was a very rural area. Hmm. I'm thinking, wow, how the census takers even get up there? So I just researched who the people of color were, and I found this Matthews family that was there from the 1840 census through the 1890. And I found out they had three sons who left Yellow Hill to enlist in the U.S. colored troops. One was drafted. I found it pretty ironic that 
Mm. Um, the United States government drafted black men to fight for this yeah. country, and they were yeah. not even allowed to be citizens. Yeah, uh, couldn't vote, couldn't sue anyone. See, I didn't know that. I, I didn't know that black people were mm. able to be drafted. Yeah, and I found a tie-in um, here. Eighteen hundred Samuel Butler. Um, and the Mars family, they were connected with Pine Grove Furnace up in Cumberland County. And we believe that that was a stop in the Underground Railroad. I even found an account by Harriet Hill, who lived in Adams County, talking about going from the Quaker Valley, which is right beside Yellow Hill, up to Pine Grove Furnace to stay with the Watts family. So the Quakers that lived in Manalan Township I believe the white folks, the Quakers, people who attended Manal and Friends meeting were abolitionists. They uh, very early on had public sentiments published in the newspaper about their firm stance on anti-slavery. Uh, they said slavery is inconsistent with principles of Christianity. Um, it's just it's just wrong. They formed the Adams County Protection Society, and this is in 1820. Mm -hmm. So we know that there were kidnappings here, and I think that I found in the census records sometimes free blacks living with the white Quaker families. So I saw the tie-in. Quakers were an organized religion that told their members – if you want to continue to be a member of the of the Quaker meeting, you can't own slaves. And this was in 1770s. So early on, Quakers had a very firm stance, anti-slavery. And either if you wanted to continue keeping your slaves, then you just wouldn't have a say in the Quaker meeting. Hmm. So um, Quakers were influential in Pennsylvania in getting um, some liberty laws <laughs> where they were keeping track of slave catchers and slave owners from the South coming up here and um, taking free Negroes off the street. Um, so it was a, a problem. And we can tell by the newspapers that the Quakers were upset about these kidnappings. They formed the Adams County Protection Society. The object of the society is not to interfere between the masters and slaves, but to use proper means to prevent kidnappings. So they believed that these people had ample ground to have freedom there from being violently sieged and dragged into bondage by slaveholders in the adjacent South. So, so wait, let me let me back you up there. OK. Uh, so they read that again. Their, their purpose is not to what? Not to uh, proper means to prevent kidnapping such colored persons. We may have ample ground to believe they are by law entitled to freedom from being violently sieged and dragged into bondage by slaveholders and soul drivers in the adjacent states. So, but I think the first thing in there was um, not to interfere with master and slave. Is that what? Right. Uh, object is not to interfere between masters and slaves, but to use proper means to prevent kidnapping. So, but if the master. They were recovering people who were free. Kitty Payne's kidnapping oh, in Oh, I see. Okay. Was, she was absolutely a free So woman. in other words, we're, our, our purpose is not to scoff at the Fugitive Slave Act and interfere with that because the court because that was legal, that was, right? That was federal law, <clears throat> even, even though they did. Of course, but the, but publicly right. they have to say they're not. Right. But their, but with the, their purpose is, is to protect freeborn or freed blacks. Right. Okay, got it, got yeah. it. Okay. And, and they had obviously, I believe, you know, when, when you form an organization like this, there's a need. They'd seen this. They'd seen these kidnappings. So the African-American population in Butler and Manalan Township was what just sparked my interest, just curious. Mm. And then the Matthews family, Ed and Annie Matthews, owned property up there. I found the deed um, through a big search in the courthouse, and I— saw that that deed abutted the property of my great-grandfather, Henry P. Sando. Hmm. So when I started looking at this, I didn't know. But I had family up there for years, and so it, it just kind of ties in. Now, you mentioned the family name Sando. Uh, you're also related to George Washington Sando, right. First it's Union. A, it's uh, a uh, uh, question on the guide test. Yes. Who was the first soldier killed here? George Washington Sando. He wasn't really in the 21st PA. Many of the men who were in his local cavalry unit attached to the 21st PA, and right. they later erected the monument. Um, I, the, Matt, my friend Matt Sheeds is also related to him. Are you related to Matt? Um, we have connections. I have. Um, am I related to Matt? I think that his uh, 
his, I believe his cousin Timmy and I have been had talked about that. I think there is something. There was also something um, about George Sando's wife and a companion that she had. Um, I'm sorry, my memory is just a little a little <laughs> foggy on that. It's okay. Um, but the um, I believe that. Pine Hill was the name of the area, and that surprised me when I started looking at this. Like, boys, Pine Hill right. now turned into Yellow Hill, and I believe it was to reflect the skin tones of the early inhabitants there. And and let's just be real about this: these were not consensual relationships sure. that created these mulatto babies. Right. This was rape by slave owners, yep. and I've seen it a lot. So um, it really intrigued me. Who were the who were those people that I saw in those census totals? And I wanted to find out exactly who they were. I found the black cemetery on Yellow Hill that was burned. Uh, the church that was there was consecrated in 1869. Children of that area were being educated in 1870. So I think building that church meant educating the children in that school. That church, we believe, was burned down in the 1890s by three white men, according to local lore. It could be my relatives, seriously, for all I know. Right, right. Um, my dad dropped end bombs at the kitchen table. Uh, it's still a word of choice at times uh, with other family members. So I, I really don't know. It just is a, a real curiosity curiosity to me. But it was a beautiful place. They had flowers planted there. They had about 20 people buried there. It was a two-room church. Um, they had camp meetings up there. They were worshiping the Lord in the late parts of the summer in September, having Negro camp meetings in the 1840s through the 1890s. Hmm. They had Memorial Day services at Yellow Hill. Um, so it was a celebratory place. It was a place of uh, worship. It was a place of memorializing their veterans. We know that two veterans of the U.S. color troops were buried there. Charles Matthews was buried there. I'm sorry, Charles Parker was buried there. He was in Company F of the 3rd Regiment, and his body was removed from Yellow Hill. He's now at the National Cemetery. And William Matthews was buried there in 1891. His body is in Lincoln Cemetery with his wife, Mary Jane, and their daughter, hmm. Laura, who were also at Yellow Hill. So when the Battle of Gettysburg occurred, <clears throat> or I guess prior to that, uh, you know, everybody knows the black population here got the hell out of town, uh, most of them. Um, and uh, I always just kind of assume they scattered in every direction where they knew somewhere to go. Is is that basically I true? I think so. I, okay. think, I think that um, when the battle came, of course, con in the newspaper, it talked about Confederates taking free blacks off the street in Chambersburg mm. and Waynesboro. So they definitely did um, flee. They knew they didn't want to be seen by a Confederate. They wanted to hide from them. Mm -hmm. um, some never came back. Some did. Where did they go? Um, they may have gone to an aunt, uncle in Harrisburg, York, Chambersburg. Um, probably not south. Probably not south. Would but, not be But wise. maybe Harrisburg, York, Chambersburg. Uh -huh. um, cities where there was already um, an African-American population where they might blend in, hide, just... Um, but Chambersburg wasn't the best place to go because, the, as I said, um, you didn't want to see the Confederates up there. And they were here no. prior to the Battle of Gettysburg. Right. So uh, b b do we know like a good chunk of them went to Yellow Hill or any um, of them? All I know is Jean Odom told me that her family lore was, and this would be the Jones family. And the Jones family um, have roots here that are very deep. Um, I found um, several Jones women married to men in the U.S. colored troops. So she, I don't have any idea really how many people fled there, mm -hmm. um, but it was a safe haven supposedly for some of Gettysburg's free Negroes. Um, so it's up by, for those of you who uh, are trying to picture this in your head and you haven't looked it up yet, it's up near uh, like Bendersville, Aspers, that yes, area there. Yes. Manallen Township yeah. is what it's called. Yeah, actually Yellow Hill is kind of right on the line at Butler and Manallen. Okay. And the Quaker meeting is definitely in Manallen Township. So you have the Quaker Valley where the Quaker meeting house is and then Yellow Hill sits above it. So before I asked you if it's on Route 34, the church, um, but you know the brick church I'm talking about? And this might not even be the right area, but it is from, from what? Yeah, no, it's definitely north of Bendersville. I might be going too far north of Bendersville. It's this little brick church on 
on the road. And it's this point where 34, it's a very quaint, picturesque looking little piece of the valley there. On the right, as I'm heading north on 34, there's just like an open field or something. It's somebody's house or something like that. But it's a hill that goes up. So like the road is kind of at the bottom. It's actually cut into the slope of the hill. But Listen to the rest of this interview and dozens like it. Support the show and get early access to special episodes, early and discounted ticket sales, and more. The second lieutenant level and above gets access to all monthly Patreon episodes. So please go to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg, choose a tier, and join. And I thank you in advance.